Hello everybody, today I'm going to be drawing uh, the Republicans only insisting that uh, these are the rules that Trump should have known, uh, which I find to be an amusing argument. Uh, our rules are unfair, but you should have known that from the beginning, you idiot. So, um, we are ready to begin. And thank you for joining me. Please, uh, please chat and give me lots of comments. And if you haven't followed me, come on and follow. So this is where I am with this. And I'm uh, starting off having already started to sketch because um, I wasn't sure if this worked. I wasn't sure if it was a strong enough cartoon. Um, I did want to take advantage of an opportunity to draw Trump's butt, which seems to me to me my obligation as a cartoonist. Um, so he's got his little butt there. Not quite happy with his face. Not quite happy with uh, the elephant, although I think that uh, as I go along I can uh, fix all that in the drawing. Not sure I can fix Trump's face in the drawing. Maybe he needs to be just entirely uh, uh, that's a little bit better. Chin was wrong. He needed more chin down there. Oh, right. I think that's looking better. We'll, we'll get to that when I get to the left side of the paper. So I'm going to start drawing on the right. Okay. Um, so the elephant's going to say, it's your responsibility to know the rules as he's being dragged behind Trump. Which strikes me as a little bit funny. I think this could be a better cartoon, but uh, it addresses the issue. It's funny enough, and it's got his butt. And uh, actually, the butt should be enough. So, um, I will uh, start drawing this. Yeah, I didn't know until now that uh, I quite wanted to do this one. And... Uh, because all these racing analogies are getting pretty tired. But I think it's good enough. It's the best on the list for today. So I go with it. What the hell? If I draw it nicely, it'll be a good cartoon. Good enough anyway. It's my uh, Flint, Michigan water. Ready? Where's my glasses? Put my glasses somewhere. What the hell? Excuse me just a minute. All right, I'm back. I found my glasses. Ready to start. Here we go. I've got a piece of sandpaper over here on the right in case you're wondering about that. All right, let's start with the lettering. A 
fuzzy pencil. You know, if you guys want me to keep talking to myself, you got to prod me with some comments. You guys are so quiet. Ah! BD Bone 6, nice to see you here. BD Bones. So, Beady Bones, you're right. You like this one a lot. You like this cartoon, the dragon, the the elephant, and Trump's butt? I think it's not much of a cartoon, but what the hell? Captures the flavor. It's funny to me that uh, Trump complains about the rules disenfranchising the voters, which they do, and the retort to that is, uh, these have been the rules all along, as though that's a good thing. We've always ignored the will of the voters. It's nothing new. What are you complaining about? You should have known that we ignore the, the choices of the voters all along. That's your responsibility. Ridiculous argument. And of course, the will of the voters is only ignored when the party establishment wishes to ignore them. So I'm, I'm uh, sympathetic to Trump's arguments on this one. Okay, now his other shoe will be here. So, Beady Bone Six, have you uh, have you followed me yet? I need the follows. K 
Kitty Pals. Right, so I have always envied you American cartoonists for having the donkey and elephant, easy and fun symbols to represent the parties. Yes, they're a gift to cartoonists, a gift from Thomas Nast. So where are you from, Kitty Pals? Hey, thanks for following Beady Bones. I appreciate it. I need it from you too, Kitty Pals. Okay. I'm not putting any crosshatch on his business suit because I'm anticipating that uh, I'm going to be doing pinstripes. I think he's going to need pinstripes. See, that knee is going to go... There's no really... No real place for that other knee to go under there, huh? Okay. about where these wrinkles go. It's going to have the back of this collar there. Yeah, that's wrong. He's not quite... Uh, not quite right here. Serafina Lucia, thank you for following. I appreciate it. That was very nice of you. Yeah, he's definitely going to need the pinstripes to make this suit work. Oh, Kitty Pals, yes! I remember you talking about Iceland. 
Well, you've got some crazy politics going on there right now, huh? I saw the video of your uh, ex-president when he was answering his first questions about his uh, offshore banking company. And that was pretty interesting. Although, you know, as interesting as that was, it's really not too easy for Iceland to make the news in America. Even when you guys have news. So, Kitty Pals, you should show me some uh, samples of your work. Email some stuff to Daryl at Kegel.com. I would like to take a look. I don't know much about Icelandic cartoonists. I hadn't quite decided what I wanted to do with his expression. Because you can make an argument with this cartoon for a variety of expressions. Excuse the noise. Oop. Bringing the microphone down a little bit. do a compromise. One eyebrow angry, one eyebrow surprised. I think that a little bit ambiguity is a little bit better. Very angry you think? No red ties? Nice to see you here, no red ties. No, I think uh, I think there's more surprise and horror than anger. Although I do have a little bit of angry eye going on here in the l his left or right eye. The argument about you should know the rules is uh, such a nonsense argument, but it's interesting to me that it's uh, picked up and parroted by uh, by the anti-Trump Trump voices as though it's a legitimate argument. Now, one of the reasons that I sketched this up before I started beyond not knowing if I actually wanted to draw it or not, was that this is actually kind of hard to draw given that his position is awkward here. I've got his arm cutting through his mouth. So the mouth had to be this kind of crazy long thing in order to 
in order to work with the arm in front of it, which meant I don't have room for a tongue, which I usually do with a big open mouth. He is going tongueless. I'm happy with this business. Well, it's very nice to see um, so many of the same folks showing up when I do a new uh, unannounced live stream start to get to know you guys and that's lovely. I like this uh, Twitch creative community. I don't know that I can make any business purpose out of it, but it's nice to nice to have some regulars when I draw to chat with. good elephant textures here. Seriously, folks, if you want me to talk to myself, you got to chat a little bit. Kitty Pals, as cartoonist, do you root for the presidential candidate you like to draw the most? I do not. We're having a, a crazy election where I think most people agree that they don't like the candidates. It's a lesser of two evils election. That said, all of the candidates are good cartoon characters right now. I can give him a couple peels and squeans.
<laughs> All right. I think I will go straight into the pinstripes. Leave the Donald. Donald for the end. Pinstripes, I think, are a little more appropriate here because this is the depiction of the GOP establishment. Pinstripes imply um, imply uh, businessmen and money and establishment. I think the pinstripes are necessary. No red ties rights. I know you did Muppets. I'm seeing some gonzo in the eyes on the face. Those carry over great. He has that angry, surprised look on all the time. Gonzo's great. Although I thought uh, if you want the angry eyes, you go with Sam the Eagle. All right. So why do I spin the paper around so much? It's because I'm more comfortable drawing these kinds of things that require a sure hand in one direction. Sam was super dignified, writes no. Oh, super angry. This is not dignified. Sam the Eagle would say that he's dignified. He's really kind of a tea party Muppet, isn't he? Thank you for the compliment on my pinstripes, Serafina Lucia. I'd have uh, just done regular crosshatch on this. 
rather than doing the pinstripes. It wouldn't have been as interesting for describing his form. Although, of course, you pin, you uh, crosshatch to describe form, but still. So Kitty Pals writes, has someone ever really, ever been really assaulted by your cartoons? Well, assaulted. I can't think of any actual assault by cartoon. a funny question kitty pals insulted maybe oh yes I do lots of insulting but I don't usually hear from insulted politicians in fact no matter how insulting you are to a politician the response they want from the cartoonist is send me a copy of your cartoon to hang on my trophy wall. But 
the ones who act most insulted are the ones who uh, claim to be insulted for religious reasons. Ah, kitty pals. In general, draw cartoons about the Middle East. Anything about uh, abortion gun rights lots of people get their noses out of joint but it's those topics this topic isn't going to get anybody mad As I do the pinstripes, I have to anticipate where they're going. I guess there's not a lot to say about sitting and spending a lot of time drawing pinstripes.
So what cartoons would you guys like to see? Do you have any cartoon suggestions? I do get lots of cartoon suggestions from readers and I probably draw two of them per year because the ideas are bad. They usually involve uh, people who think in words and don't have any idea of what they would their ideas would look like in a drawing. Get lots of uh, requests for drawings that say in panel one draw two armies clashing with each other while the sky is filled with helicopters. In panel two one army overtakes the other army. Some of the helicopters are shot down by another army. Just nonsense drawing stuff. So Serafina Lucia writes Sailor Moon. <laughs> you want me to draw Sailor Moon? You get a lot of uh, a lot of manga artists on uh, on Twitch Creative, don't you? Well, I uh, this will not be. Uh, Let's see, Red, No Red Ties writes, it's fun to watch you look at the monitor to the right to see if the twitch is up when we're not saying anything. Yes, that's what I do. Monitor to the right is uh, where I have the, the twitch feed. I'm also checking to make sure that I haven't uh, frozen, everything is okay, and I can glance and see how many people are looking. Looks like we have 11 right now. So I think you can see that if you didn't have the um, the pinstripes, he would be looking pretty uh, pretty dull. He needed the pinstripes. So uh, yeah, Sailor Moon. So what's with all this uh, friggin? manga and anime on on uh, Twitch. I think manga and anime is a blight. I don't like the idea of a whole uh, genre of cartoon where they uh, have the cartoonists all trying to draw in the same style rather than develop their own styles. I'm not a big fan of that particular style. We haven't seen anybody try to bring a manga style into editorial cartooning. Perhaps that's a good thing. Ooh, that line is wrong. It's got to go. It needs to be uh, straight elastic. Serafina Lucia writes, I think a lot of people take up drawing in the manga style because they think it's easy and just stick with it, but that's my opinion, or they're just really big fans. Uh, I don't know. I have, a, I have a theory about young people drawing which is that back in the day, back in my day, kids collected comic books and they drew superheroes. Now they don't. They uh, play video games instead of drawing and focusing on the comic books. They watch their comic book movies. They play the video games. So they don't spend all those hours learning to draw like they used to. And then there are the mangas I'm involved with a couple of uh, 
scholarship programs for cartoonists and it is appalling to see the entries because they're probably 50 percent anime style all trying to do the same thing and what a disappointment I think uh, anytime you can discourage kids from drawing in anime style, it is your responsibility to discourage them. Pants coming down. That one I think needs a little bit more on that side. And then he's gonna. Ha I'm gonna just ignore the stuff that goes between his legs. Actually, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, life philosophy. All right, there's his butt. A little bit of tailbone. I don't know, I'll debate the tailbone later. No, the tailbone didn't look right. He needed a little bit more butt crack, huh? that look right? Serafina Lucia writes, I don't have my finger on the pulse of youth today, but when I was younger I used to draw in the manga style, but I feel like I sort of grew out of it. Who or what was your biggest inspiration and influence in developing your style? Well, I grew up with comic books and Mad Magazine. So, uh, those are my influences. Comic books and Mad Magazine. My favorite comic book artist was uh, John Buscema. who I had the pleasure to uh, meet, went on a trip with him to a cartoonist trip to a festival in Lucca, Italy, probably 20 years ago before he died. Very impressive cartoonist. Very nice to be able to get to know him after uh, being a fan for so many childhood years. Red Ties writes, did you ever get published in MAD? I can't find your name in there. Nope, I never worked for MAD. I know the guys though. Meet them at the cartoonist meetings. They're pretty good about coming to the cartoonist meetings. Great guys at MAD. But no, my career did not take the MAD magazine kind of path. But I think that there's a MAD magazine flavor to my work. Flavor of just having grown up with it.
so no red ties writes uh for years i thought i recognized your work from mad magazine but i tried to look it up recently with your answer nope i was not there actually there's a pretty broad range of styles with the mad magazine guys his leg here. Those shoes seem learned, learned shoes. I have a, a way I'm comfortable drawing shoes, but um, I know that my shoes would be better if I brought up a Google Images page of shoes and tried to make them look like something in particular. But I'm not sure I want to draw too much attention to the shoes. I just want them to be on the feet in the right way. like the knuckles I don't think much about knuckles hand is kind of lousy but it's kind of funny I'll think about whether I want to keep it It's just too lousy. A little bit funny, but too lousy. Let's give it another try. Okay. That makes a little more sense. Ooh, 
been doing this for an hour already. Plus about uh, another hour of fiddling around deciding whether I wanted to draw this or not. Deciding on what the elephant should say. So folks, there's 16 of you watching, and I have one new follow today, and there's only about three of you who say anything. Is this just uh, the Twitch thing? Do people just lurk? appreciate you, Sarah, and Kitty Pals and No Red Ties for not hiding. You know, we never ever get to see uh, see Trump's bare arms. I don't know if they're fat or skinny or hairy or freckled. Just not something that you see, huh? I'm assuming he's got some freckles. He's a little bit of a ginger, huh? Serafina Lucia writes, I know the feeling of streaming and no one talks to you. It kind of makes me feel weird anyway. Yeah. People don't talk. to rethink his face. Oh, wet shirt. Nice to see you here. Don't click that. Uh-oh. Well, that is kind of interesting. I should ban him because his name is Wet Shirt. K 
Kitty Palace, have you worked as a political cartoonist for a single paper at a time? Did the editor have influence on the cartoons? Um, when I started out, it was like a second career for me. I had been uh, uh, advertising cartoonist. And I started working for this newspaper called The Midweek in Hawaii. It was a weekly. It was delivered to every address. Kind of an interesting little paper in that they stole the the uh, see you later, wet shirt. You seem to be a, a provocative fellow. Um, they stole the grocery store ads from the the dailies. And so they'd come out on Wednesday and be pretty thick and full of grocery store ads. And so people actually looked at this weekly newspaper. It had uh, the biggest circulation of any paper in Hawaii, which was fun. So there was this time when they uh, were trying to get the state legislature to give them... Uh, give them uh, government notices that they could run as ads in the paper and that's a big deal because there's so many darn government notices and the legislature had made a, a law that government notices can only run in daily paid circulation newspapers and this was a not paid circulation weekly newspaper and they had to change the law to get this business and of course the daily newspapers were opposing them and the governor had to sign the law so uh, huh So you think that uh, kitty link that he has is uh, some kind of virus or something? It's odd. Anyway, editor told me I must not draw the governor of Hawaii, who they needed to sign this bill, for all these months while the bill was being considered. Oh, that was terrible. Because in Hawaii, Hawaii is like a little third world country and the governor is the despot. And all things are about the governor. So I pushed back on that and got some cartoons killed. And um, then I went to work for what was at the time the big daily in Hawaii, the Honolulu Advertiser. And I was a daily cartoonist there for a while. I think I was drawing three national, hello Bear Edwards, three national and two local cartoons a week. And um, boy did I get cartoons killed there. They had a very low tolerance for uh, anything provocative, particularly anything about the Navy. They were uh, in the pockets of the Navy and didn't want any criticism of the Navy. Honolulu was a Navy town. All right, Trump. I think the key to Trump is his uh, eyebrows. So let's give him a try. Those are pretty good Trump eyes, huh? I think I lucked out on the first try. Lousy in the sketch, but better here. All right, now his nose is always a challenge because it looks so different face on than it does on the side. Face on, 
you want to draw it sharply going straight down, but from the side it's not that abnormal a looking nose. Tom Toons. Hi, Daryl. Nice to see you working the old traditional way, pencil and paper. Tom Toons, you look like you're new here. I need for you to uh, um, to follow me. I need the follows. Barrett Edwards, you know I post all of these to uh, YouTube on DarylKagel.com when I finished the the art. So you can see it all nice with the finished thing. And watch the whole... Oh, thank you very much, Tom Toons. Uh, watch the whole process with... Um, uh, on YouTube, you can speed it up to two times, which is really better. I wish I could speed myself up to two times and draw them that way. Uh, his, his mouth is wrong. The nose is not very interesting in Trumpian. He needs the ducky lips. And then he's got the, the chin thing going down. What do you think? Good for Trump? Oh, Bear Edwards, so you do go to DarylKagel.com. Good. Do you guys ever look at uh, Kagel.com, my uh, main cartoon site? We just did a big uh, redesign. We've been getting some complaints, but not as many complaints as we thought for such a radical redesign. And uh, traffic has actually gone up a little bit since the redesign. Which is nice. Part of the reason I'm drawing Trump's hair th this way is because I <laughs> ran out of paper. Tom Toons writes, left ear oops. Is it a bad ear? Actually, it's his, yeah, his left. Kitty Pals, you like the new design? Oh, good. You know, what was happening was the site wasn't designed to be uh, all device friendly. And we were getting a larger and larger percentage of people who were coming 
following the link or something to find the site with their cell phones and then leaving because it just was not a cell phone friendly site. And we're noticing that uh, we're keeping some of the, oh, those are not freckles on the butt, those are pimples on his butt. There we go. Is that good, Tom Tunes? Anyway, it's nice to be keeping uh, more of the cell phone random visitors. We get well more than 50% of the visitors to the site that are uh, first time visitors, and most of them. Um, most of them leave after looking at one page, so that was a, a problem for us to deal with. got some things on it that we're still working on, some bugs to fix. A big thing that we're going to be adding is a uh, big slideshow. The biggest complaint we've gotten about the new design is that uh, people complain that cartoons are smaller. And of course you click on any cartoon and you get a big giant display of the cartoon on another page, but uh, they don't want to click on a cartoon to just see them bigger they want to see them bigger the first time they get there so we're introducing a slideshow feature which should be pretty cool slideshow all the pictures on the page in a larger format Okay. Give him a little bit more of a shadow on the ground underneath him. All right, I think this is done. I think I'm pleased with my Trump. I think the elephant is working. Oh, well, thank you, Tom Tunes. So what I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm going to take a little scanning break. And because uh, it takes probably 10, 15 minutes to get this scanned and into the computer. So, um, 
don't go away because I will be back and uh, then I'll have this in the computer and I will uh, I will color this and finish it up and get it out to newspapers so uh, let's I'm gonna set the timer for 15 minutes and uh, um, don't go away know that I'm doing uh, scanning and potty break and refilling my uh, my uh, water from Flint Michigan down here and um, I'll see you guys in a few minutes so um, thanks for sitting with me with this guy and uh, off we go uh, on the the next journey
Okay, folks, I've returned. Thank you for sticking around. Quite a few of you stuck around. I was gone for a few minutes. Um, nice to see you back. So here I'm moving over to the computer. Alright, excuse the noise. My microphone was in the way of the computer. Actually, you can probably look down on the computer. There, see, here we are. It's my Wacom tablet, and uh, it's on the same drawing table that I was just drawing on. And I know this is not a very good way to look at it, so I'll give you back to the, the screen view in just a second. But just so you know what I'm doing, I sit here and I draw with the stylus. Okay. So now I have to do the housekeeping. Clean it up and patch it together because I've got a little cheap scanner and uh, what you gonna do? Oops, I don't want that. I want the canvas size. We'll make that 18. That looks okay. And this is just the regular old uh, housekeeping you gotta do. See, that goes back to the back of his snout. All right, I can handle that. Okay, now let's uh, Sketch 4565 says, doesn't Photoshop do that automatically? Oops, not that I'm aware of. Oh dear, I forgot to put this second bit on. Uh, uh, no, I don't know anything about that Sketch 4565. Tell me about it. I'm pretty messy about this stuff and I just did this wrong so I have to redo it. I needed to first change it to grayscale, unlock the bottom layer, now let's add it. I'm using an old version of Photoshop. Maybe that's something new that they added in a newer version of Photoshop, huh? That would be nice. There we go what I intended to do the first time. Let's go to the right one. 
Under the File or Edit drop-down menu, there should be an Automate tab. We go File, Automate. Okay. I'm using CS4 Tom Tunes. So how uh, you guys give me a lesson? How do how do I do this? All right. Uh, this one I'm going to finish in just a second, so I'll go with this for now. But I'd open up another window and try it if you'd tell me. Oops. That's it. All right. That's looking okay. Photo merge option, which is where? Here under Automate, under File, Automate, there's a photo merge option. Okay. What does that do? Huh. Let's try a new window for that. Oops, not what I want. I'll flatten this one down. Save it first. Let's try it. I appreciate this, guys. All right. Photo merge. And then I want to uh, reposition, I guess. And use files. Right, middle, left. Open. OK. Well, it would have been nice if that worked. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. What can I say? It was an idea. All right, let's... Grab this. Come down a little bit. I will resize to a thousand eight four point five. Contrast, brightness down a little bit, keep the black lines. It doesn't like to make the contrast 100%. You have to do it a few times to try to convince it.
Um, I haven't had as much luck adjusting the level as Tom Tunes. It's, uh, it seems more finicky to me, and contrast is pretty easy. Just drag it all the way to the right, do it three or four times, I'm done, rather than trying to futz with the levels. Because, uh, oh well, what can I say? So, let's go for bitmap. Flatten layers, okay, 50%, okay. Save. Pump, pump, pump. Now I'm going to clean up the hickeys. And just go through it and do some housekeeping. I have uh, tried playing with the levels. I just uh, I wasn't comfortable with it. I would like to figure out that automating the, the putting the pieces together. That sounds pretty cool. I was completely unaware of that. And I'm sure I just did it wrong. So this is just uh, just general housekeeping here. I find that um, if I worked in pen and did this as uh, hard black line on uh, white paper, I find that um, I still have just as much crud I have to come in and clean up in this process as if I do it in pencil, which is a little counterintuitive. suppose this is the part that takes away some of the romance, huh? the sausage is made stuff. Tom Toons writes, I do my roughs in pencil and then ink in digitally, but I prefer the looseness of the pencil roughs. It may alter my 
my uh, methods after this. You know when you uh, when you do it this way, you end up with a nice piece of original art. And sometimes I sell my original art, and it's nice to have original art. And I like the look of the pencil. And you know, when I do ink, I get stiff. And I notice there's a kind of a look among the artists who draw entirely on their Wacom tablet, which is um, kind of uh, cursory. It doesn't seem to have the same uh, finesse. They don't handle their stylus as thoughtfully as a pencil with a chisel point, even though you can have a chisel point on your stylus. There's a kind of a commonality that I see to the artists that draw on the Wacom tablet, which is less uh, uh, loses a lot. I like uh, these artifacts of a pencil. You know, sometimes it doesn't entirely cover. Sometimes it's got a little bit of bite. Sometimes it get a little bit of crud. Crud is sometimes good. I want your lines to have character. Drawing on the tablet seems to take away some of the character. Okay, I think that's looking wrong. I'm going to take this one out. That's looking right. All right. I think the Donald needs the tiniest extra sprig of hair. Okay. All right, I think we're good here. Now let's let's make this grayscale, then CMYK. I'm going to add a bunch of layers. Just 
just as many layers as I have room for in this layers window. top. We will select all the black lines. And I want those to be a hundred percent black. You guys have me uh, wondering about that automatically positioning the, the scans. That would be a nice feature that I have not discovered. All right, I'm going to delete the black and let's fill. Sometimes it fills 100% black and sometimes it does not. Well, let's see if it did today. It did! What a deal! Oh, we'll select the inverse and delete. Go down to layer one. Double check that that's white. Fill 100%. OK. Go back to the top layer. Make sure that it multiplies. Now let's go down here to layer 2. Now I'm ready to color. Oh no, now I'm ready to change the resolution. Image size 1000 needs to go to 400. Okay. That's because it just gets too big to use if I'm doing a thousand DPI color. I have to reduce it to send it to the editors anyway. And 400 DPI at uh, 8 inches wide is plenty good resolution for anything I ever do. So, what colors do I want to make this? Hmm. I suppose Donald's shorts should be red. You want to do the Republican red color while you can. All right, let's let's go with uh, yellow. Yellow is always safe. Golden, huh? You think golden is good for Trump? You know, I can get a yellow ochre, and it doesn't necessarily stand out as golden unless you do shiny indication kind of stuff on it. And that can be, that can be a bitch. Alright, pattern stamp tool. Let's do a little bit of light white
just needs to have uh, texture to look right. I think that's okay. About as much texture as I need. Now I'm going to block in the places where I know I need to do things. So let's uh, have a flesh layer. And this will be um, 3, 22, 22. That looks good. This will be a base flesh, and I will uh, come back and do both lighter or darker from this, lighter and darker from this middle tone. And then I usually make the elephant flesh tone purple. I, I usually don't like the way that when you print in CMYK, your purples get lost. They kind of gray down. It's very difficult to get a nice bright purple. But the flip side of that is if you don't want it to be a bright purple, you're just doing something interesting with old gray elephant flesh. Then make it purple, let it gray down, and uh, then it's a little bit more interesting for having been purple rather than gray. Oh, you like his lips, kitty pals. Notice how the flesh tone looks so much more purple when it's surrounded by yellow goes back to your basic color class in art school, huh? Alright, let's give the elephant some base purple flesh. How about 20, 30, 0? Is that too purple? It is too purple. 25. Alright. That's a little dark, isn't it? That's better.
Okay. That's a little wrong. pleased with Trump's eyes there. I like the the tilt in his interesting upper eyelid. So, I think he's going to need a gray suit. Could give him a brown suit. Maybe brown suit's a little funnier. Let's do that. Brown suit's funnier. A little bit. Go down here. Kitty Pals writes, do you think being an editorial cartoonist is a responsible job? Oh, I think so. We certainly have lots of journalistic ethics that we have to uh, comply with. Almost as many journalistic ethics issues as uh, regular journalists. We have a few freedoms that regular journalists don't enjoy. We can put anything into the mouths of people that we draw, whether they said it or not, which is f fun. Real regular journalists can't do that, but we have all the other responsibilities of, of journalists. We're not supposed to take gifts. We're not supposed to work for lobbyists. We're not supposed to be paid to put anything in our cartoons. We gotta, gotta, uh, maintain a little bit of uh, journalistic uh, journalistic distance. Okay, what do I want to? I'm going to give him a, a forgettable tie color. That looks good. Oops. 
Oops, I shouldn't have done that. Step backwards and step backwards. So it needs to go on another layer. So I'm going to come back and and um, put some tone in his suit. Actually, a brown pin pinstripe suit is kind of odd, huh? Let's get uh, some brown pinstripe in here. No red ties. We don't. We don't do red ties. I don't like to do red ties because uh, they draw your eye away, and um, they're like creating little focal points. And you never really want the tie to be. Uh, to be an important part of the drawing. If I'd have given him a red tie, would you have objected, as your namesake implies? I haven't seen you here before, Quicker. Quicker, I need, uh, I need some more follows. I really need for you to come follow me, Quicker. So you're right, how much symbolism usually goes into these things? Um, oh, not a poly. Nice to see you here again. Um, but to answer quicker, I don't uh, I don't hide things in my cartoons like uh, actually most cartoonists don't hide things in their cartoons. couple noteworthy guys who put their uh, kids names into their cartoons oh thank you so much quicker I appreciate it um, but I don't do that uh, once in a while I'll, I'll stick a, a caricature of somebody into a cartoon I thought about doing a premium for uh, contributors on Kegel.com, or heroes on Kegel.com. 
which would be that I would do uh, a caricature, fit them into a, a cartoon somewhere. Because sometimes I do generic people in cartoons, I can do that. It can be funny. Um, so no red ties, right? The establishment trying to pull down Trump's shorts is not a symbol. Um, no, I don't think it's a symbol. It's a depiction of uh, how I see the situation. But when you talk about a symbol, it's like it's symbolizing something else. I suppose pulling on his shorts symbolizes they're trying to uh, hold him back from the nomination. But... Uh, you know, as a guy who uh, deals in metaphors, I think of metaphors a bit more, uh, that needs to be more gray, doesn't it? A bit more, um, more openly symbolic. And you know, the elephant's a symbol for the Republican Party. But I suppose the race for the nomination is uh, the racing in track is a metaphor for racing for the nomination. But uh, ah. Okay, he's looking pretty close to being done. I could give him a little bit of texture. I will. Kitty Pals writes, I envy your animals, and since we do not have those in Iceland, using the party color that is for their ties is a big part of our symbolism, but we have the pirate party over here, which is a lot of fun for cartoonists. <laughs> pirate party, that's, that's great fun. No Red Ties writes, uh, reveal him symbolically. You do not have to call them symbols. No Poli writes, I'm not very fond of politics, but I'm here to enjoy the drawing process. Oh, well, I think even people who follow politics closely find that they are not fond of the politics. Okay. Oh, I was going to do a little bit of... Uh, of uh, light texture, 13%, 76, all right. Elephants really have quite a bit of interesting texture. Put a little on a suit, too. That's a little better. Okay, a little bit of uh, actually, I could put a little, couple little bits of gray in him as well. No, that I don't think that actually worked.
Okay, the Donald. Let's do a little bit of lighter flesh on the Donald. Okay, let's go with a little bit of the darker. And that'll be about here. That another layer. So not a pulley. You want me to to uh, respond to you here? I can talk about TwitchCon. I I would like to go to TwitchCon, but uh, I would I would want to give a seminar or something. Try to build my my meager audience. And so uh, I, uh, I I responded to their form, and I said uh, I would give a uh, a seminar or a panel. They have not responded. I think I'm not a good fit for Twitch. I think I'm kind of an oddball. I'm certainly the only person, only only editorial cartoonist, who's um, who's doing this. Not a poly. Did you go to uh, TwitchCom last year? Did you like it? Was it uh, was it good for a creative, or was it just all video games? I'm kind of interested in how other people with Macs deal with. Uh, streaming because um, streaming is certainly much easier to do if you work on a PC than on a Mac. Okay, well I've been putting off deciding what color to make his uh, suit, haven't I? He's gonna need a little bit of pink in the cheeks. I find that uh, find that if you don't put the pink in the cheeks you lose some life there's some life to pink in the cheeks in the ears 
There's his cheek. A little bit of pink on the nose. That's really all it takes. Just a little bit of uh, pink here and there. Oh, the butt needs to have a little bit of pink. There. It makes him look much more alive. I don't know if that comes through on the screen um, like it does on my monitor here, but when it prints, the little bit of pink really pops. And so I need to... Um, I need to uh, go light with it, uh, lighter than I would like for it to look on the screen because it's really going to really gonna gum up. Um, Quicker writes, Linux isn't that hard to install on Apple. No Adobe on it, though. Well, you see, the point of this is that I'm used to working in Photoshop um, on my Mac. And I'm not really PC competent, and uh, all my skills are Mac skills, and plus all the other artists I know, all the editorial cartoonists, they work on Macs. I don't know anybody that works on a PC in, in my little corner of the world. Tom Tones writes, Trump tends to look like he wore eye shields and then spray tanned his face orange. You know, that is true, and I noticed some of the cartoonists drawing him that way, but I have chosen not to because I think it's not um, not that strong enough that it doesn't require explanation. So it's not really a point I need to make on him, I think. Now I try when I do his hair to do the orangeness of it as a texture rather than as just making it that cut. Oops, that was too much. Because his hair is really quite uh, ephemeral. It's like a cloud. A little cloud. A hair cloud. That's, that's as orange as it needs to be. All right, you can see that I've been putting off deciding what uh, color to make his uh, suit. Natapoli writes, would you say drawing comics like this is a specific style? I wouldn't call this comics. This is uh, it's cartoon art. All right, I've got a got to commit. I think maybe the shorts should be red because the shorts are a focal point here. So uh, I'll go with that. Let's uh, sometimes I label things. And I think I'm going to come back and have to. Uh, ooh. Have some trouble with something. And it's possible I won't like this. Boy, I've been working on this two hours and 23 minutes. This is actually a quickie. Sometimes these things take about six or seven hours. You think that's too red? The shorts are the point of the art. 
You know, sometimes when I do cartoons that have subtle colors or I use browns or grays, I get complaints from editors. For so many years they were doing things in black and white and then they started getting color presses and once they get color presses, they want everything to be bright colors. And subtlety just annoys them. So I don't think I can do much subtlety. Um, so well, we can do that with the. Well, let's see, if I do a socks red, then your eyes are drawn away from there. So I'm going to have to make the. I think I'm going to go with an orange. Let's try that. <laughs> Somehow I don't think Trump does his own laundry and doesn't suffer any laundry mistakes. Part of being rich is uh, never having to worry about your white socks being washed with the red shorts. Not a Polaroid. Sorry when I said comic, I meant cartoon. Well, so ready? Yeah, I think of comics as more of a sequential narrative kind of thing. Like comic strips or comic books.
Okay, speech balloon. It's not bad. Oh, it's not 100%. Well, that's pretty dark. I don't know that I like that. Let's try this. Oh, that's better. Okay. So, am I done? No red ties. You think the balloon should have been pink? Then everybody looking at this would just uh, think of the balloon. And I don't know that I want the balloon to stand out that differently from everything else. Yeah. Colors can be a mess in the printing. This one won't be too bad. This uh, suit on the elephant, there's no telling that it's going to actually be brown. It could come out very gray. It could even come out blue because the blues darken up much more than the magentas and the yellow. Give Trump a little more uh, shading. There's a, I'd call it a horror process of when you see your cartoons in print and you say, oh no, I didn't think that would look like that. And over the years, you start avoiding some of these uh, horrible things that you saw happen now and again. Orange looks good. Yellow looks good in newspaper. Because they have a strong uh, intensity, at the same time they don't have a high value. So uh, that's good. Right. Uh, thank you for the kind words. No red ties. I think I'm done with this one. This one is finished and ready to go. Now I need to first. I need to save a copy. This one saved. Let's save as. Uh, it's going to be 400 DPI. Let's 
uh, well, I still have to do the black and white version there, Tom Tunes. So let's save as. I'm going to anticipate that this is going to be too big as a TIFF, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And that will go. Sometimes the stylus doesn't work as well as the mouse. So this will be number one 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 JPEG save. We'll call it nine. And let's see how that came out. is 2.6 megabytes. It's pretty small. Huh. Well, let's try saving it as a TIFF, see how big it gets. Save as. TIFF. With no layers. That one was 5.1 megabytes, so that's too big. So let's try save as JPEG quality 10. Excuse me. Kitty Pals writes, do you sell more of the colored image or the black and white one? Well, most of my uh, work is done through subscriptions. And although we, oh, excuse me, although we have paper use sales, uh, almost everything is all about subscriptions. So that didn't save. Did I save it in the wrong place? I did. It's 3.1 megs and that's good. So I'll go back here and I'll save again. So I'd say uh, less than half print in color. And uh, paper use sales are almost always in color. Those go mostly to books, and books can print color, and newspapers don't necessarily print color. But one thing I find that is terribly annoying is that a lot of the newspapers, most of the newspapers, <coughs> excuse me, that print black and white, Instead of taking my black and white version, they will take the color ver version and turn it into black and white. And so it ends up looking like this. Don't merge. Okay. And that is bad. And I need to come in here and make some changes. This will be gray. So the problem here is that uh, if I just grayscale it, Trump is coming out too dark. So I'm going to come in here and I'll lighten up the parts that need to be lighter just manually. And let's just uh, make him all lighter. This will be the first pass.
I give them just the line art, which is probably fine, the editors, uh, editors object. Okay, now, do I need, I think I'm going to need to brighten up the speech balloon, which is looking a little dark. I'd like for it to still have tone, but uh, without the color, that dark gray is too much of a distraction. Trump Rump, hello, cartoon man. Nice to see you here. This can have a little bit of tone in it, a little bit of texture in it. Maybe it shouldn't. It was kind of distracting, wasn't it? <coughs> All right, let's have a little bit of... Uh, A little bit of more background stuff going on. That looks better in gray. Maybe the lightest little bit of texture on that balloon. It can stand more texture in black and white than it can in color. That's it for the black and white. I think I'm pleased with that. All right. Yeah, I have to bump up the lighter textures, tone down the flesh because the flesh darkens up. Red darkens up when it goes to uh, grayscale. But I think it's okay here. So we will uh, save this as the grayscale, and I will save as no layers, tiff, let's see if the tiff will be small enough. That needs to be 111B. See what size that came out as. Two point one megabytes. So we're okay. I've got a three and a half uh, megabyte file size limit with our system because we email a lot of cartoons out to the editors, and um, uh, if they're too big, they get rejected by the email. So 3.5 is what we've got. We might up it a little bit in the future, but for now it's 3.5. And uh, that's it for today. I think you guys have, uh, have seen the process from start to finish. So this is the black and white version. And uh, 
And here's the color version. There we go. Black and white in color. Um, yep, yep, yep. I don't think there's any last thing to do. This is it. This is the cartoon. It's going to go out right now. Immediately when I'm done, it shall go to the newspapers. So, hey, thank you, everybody, for coming. I appreciate all the comments. It's nice for you guys to be more lively with your comments today. Um, and I will... Uh, I'll see you guys next time. And thank you so much for the, the follows, Leah B., Tom Toons, and Quicker. That was very nice of you. And uh, thank you for the kind words, Tom Toons and Cartoon Man. You guys are very nice. And I will... Uh, I will head out. And uh, thank you again, folks. And uh, recommend me to your friends, because I need it. And uh, see you next time.